Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to the France 24 interview. It's probably one of the United Nations' most successful social media campaigns ever. The He for She campaign, calling on men and boys to do their bit to promote equality, has prompted some 1.3 billion social media conversations. Elizabeth Niabiaro is a senior advisor to the head of UN Women and also the executive director of the He for She movement, or as somebody wrote, the brains behind it all, and she happens to join me today in the studio. Elizabeth, thank you so much for your time. Before we go and talk about he for she, let's talk about your own extraordinary story because you grew up in a poor village in Zimbabwe. You're now at the point in your life where you're WhatsApping Hollywood actor Emma Watson <laughs> because she's the ambassador or you know for he for she. What was the turning point in your life where you went from Zimbabwe to where we are today? The United Nations. When I was eight years old, I was being raised by my grandmother in a small village in Zimbabwe. And uh, at the age of eight, I encountered the UN. They came into my village feeding children, and I happened to be a hungry child. And they literally saved my life. And I decided from that young age that I wanted to work for the United Nations. And it became a life mission of mine. I ended up leaving Zimbabwe, going to the United Kingdom to study, and have now been with the UN for 15 years. But I imagine along the way, role models played a very important part in all of this. Absolutely. And I think also just, um, and this will also in, sort of, we'll talk about this in terms of where the ideas of he for she came, came by and where they came from. I grew up in a small village where women did all the hard work and men made all the important decisions. One of my biggest role models was my grandmother, of course. Uh, but then also as a young woman growing up in Africa, right next door to my country of Zimbabwe was this incredible trailblazer called Pumzilim Lamonguka, who now happens to be my boss at uh, UN Women. And she is a freedom fighter and I saw her work in the anti-apartheid movement and I saw her become the deputy president of South Africa, the first woman to do that. And they say you can't beat unless you see it and you know it became a real motivation for me to want to do that. So how did the He for She campaign come about? It's a mixture of my story, but also my boss's story, Pumzilim Labonguka. Again, we, I joined UN Women about five years ago and as a senior advisor to the executive director. And one of the biggest mandate that I was given was to look at what else we could do in the gender equality space. We know that you know, women have been working really hard on this issue. We know that we've made so much significant progress, but we also know that the progress is very, very slow. And we kind of got impatient and we wanted something to happen very quickly. And so, based on my own story, growing up in a village where men make all the important decisions, based on her story where in the anti-apartheid movement, it really took all of society to end, uh, uh, to end apartheid, we realized that we needed to create allyship with men and boys. And so this is really the foundation of He for She, which says it's going to take all of us and we can't have this idea of opposing genders um, against each other. I mean, you use social media. Clearly, clearly, that's a key integral element of the whole campaign. So on one hand, it does a lot of good, as in it spreads messages like what you guys are talking about. But on the other hand, there's a negative impact as well, isn't there, in terms of what young women see and read and, and, and sort of witness online. And, and that can be very depressing, I think. Indeed, but it's not only that, it's also sort of the toxic environment uh, within that space. But let me just quickly touch on the positive aspects of, of, of this. We had an incredible messenger called Emma Watson, uh, who's a goodwill ambassador of UN Women, who issued a call to action. And literally within five days, the He For She movement message had transmitted to every single country in the world. And we saw in five days, at least one man in every single country in the world sign up to the He For She movement. And within that week, 1.2 billion and conversations, which really started this, this movement. But to your point, we also saw a backlash, right? Um, there has been some major concern about just the unsafe environment that has been created online with um, cyberbullying, with um, stalking of, of young girls. And part of the work of UN Women is also to create safe online spaces for women and girls. And also the other, um, I assume, important message through all of this is that for, you know, for some, feminism is still a hard word to utter. Indeed. And I think for some young women, there's also been a bit of an anti-feminist backlash. But with people like Emma Watson, has that changed? changed the sort of debate and the conversation as a result? 
Absolutely. Also, Emma Watson came at, at the right time, at the right moment, because just, you know, before we launched the He For She movement, there was a big viral campaign, anti-feminist, young women sort of questioning where we need feminism. There were articles being written about the irrelevant nature of, of the issue because they saw their mothers go to work and they didn't quite understand what the point was. But then once we started having the conversation to say, hey, your mom might be in work, but guess what? She's not not getting paid equally. There is a gender pay gap. Hey, your mom is in work, but she cannot really, there's a glass ceiling where at some point she's not able to move to, to the senior level positions. And of course, Emma being who she is, you know, not only as a celebrity, but as a thought leader, we saw a big shift, you know. She has the cool effect. If we wanted to be as cool as Emma Watson. So it was really a big turning point for us. Now, of course, it's four years since the campaign was launched and, and since then we've seen the Me Too movement, the Time's Up campaign. How have they impacted what you're doing? It has, I think for us, emphasised the need for more He For She movements. I mean, He For She is one of many movements and, and that's really important to highlight. There has been other NGOs engaged uh, on male engagement in gender equality. What this has really done is to emphasize the need for that. Because at the end of the day, it should not be a woman who's saying, don't abuse me or don't harass me, and men should simply know not to do that. But the only way that men are going to know not to do that is if we actually engage them in a conversation. So it's what we're trying to do with the He For She movement. We have the grassroots movement that's engaging men in communities to be part of the change, to be part of the solution. But then we also have transformative in initiatives, which we can talk about later, where we're engaging men who hold big positions of power to to do something concrete with that privilege that's going to change the lives of women. But what he for she has been able to do is to create this sort of big global brand in something that is, again, very distinctive. It's called he for she. Men know what to do with it. It's their movement. Uh, so yes, I think there's much more emphasis now. Of course, we want to do more. <laughs> we are trying to mobilize one billion men. We're two million men. Um, so long way to go. Who, in your opinion, are true male champions for change? So I would have to mention my Secretary General, Guterres, the UN Secretary General. He has been quite transformative in coming in and saying gender is a priority and I'm going to walk the talk. For the first time in the UN history, we have gender parity in the senior leadership of the United Nations. Not only that, he has also launched a UN-wide uh, gender strategy, parity strategy, that we are going to really focus on the numbers. But in addition to that, just uh, this last month, we launched, uh, again, supported by UN Women, a UN enabling environment guidelines that's looking, again, at the entire environment. It's not about the numbers, because they're important, but we also have to create the environment. And one of the big issues we are pushing for is paid parental leave uh, that's championed by one of our goodwill ambassadors, uh, Ms. Anne Hathaway. So is there anyone that you can, or a company or government or yes. country, that you can say, look, yes, they're on the right path? Who is it? Yes. So I'll give you uh, two very quick example. On the corporate side, PricewaterhouseCoopers is one of our champions. They had a he for she commitment to ensure parity of their senior leadership. They came to the table with 15, no, um, 18% of women in their senior leadership. So we're we talking about N minus one, N minus two. And then within 15 months, they were able to get to 47%. So that's reaching parity because we know it's 40 to 60%. So within PwC, their global leadership team has now reached parity. And what we did this uh, past year was to look at what worked within that, within that example. And we've been able to generate a concrete solution that can now be scaled to other co companies as well. On the head of state side, Malawi is one of our champions. They came to the table and said, hey, we want to end child marriage. It's a big deal on the African continent, and of course, globally, even the US, they still child marriage. And they went on to outlaw child marriage. It's now illegal within Malawi as part of the He For Sure commitment to marry a child under the age of 18. But the real exciting thing has been the engagement of the male chiefs and the female chiefs at the community level. And in 12 months, Malawi has been able to now 20,000 child marriages, and those girls and boys are now back in school, which is quite incredible. You seem to have achieved quite a bit, but obviously there's a lot more work to be done. So Absolutely. what's next? The next big thing, so collectively within this, this group, we have about 100 he for she commitments. That's quite a lot. The biggest focus now is to make sure that we are delivering against those commitments with the intent of generating proven solutions that can then be replicated and scaled to other companies and institutions. The whole point for he for she impact 10 by 10 by 10 is to accelerate progress for gender equality. 
quality. It's to show that it makes a difference when you engage male leaders. So that's really our focus right now. But this is all happening against a backdrop. I mean, it's been four years since He for She was first rolled out, where there is a rise in populist politics. How is that affecting what you're doing? The biggest thing for us, so we are seeing also funding for women diminish, which was, again, to begin with, wasn't that great. Uh, people agree with the idea of gender equality. They don't want to put the money where the, where the work is. And this has really impacted, I think, the, our ability to do more. We have to do more because we're actually moving backwards in so many ways in terms of progress. So your jobs become harder? Much harder, much harder. But we're also very optimistic. I'm an impatient optimist. And the optimism is that I think as long as we try and do this as a collective, as all of society, we can make a lot more headway. So we need more, more role models. And this is actually one of the, the biggest uh, exciting thing for us that we have here for she as a starting point. Let's try and do as much as we can. Let's have more male role models come on board as well. Elizabeth, it's been great speaking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And that's it for the France 24 interview. Do stay with us because there will be more news and headlines coming up very shortly.